Hello everybody, it's John Broadwell, creator of the Serial Wombat Open Source Project and a consultant at Broadwell Consulting Incorporated, focusing on embedded systems and medical device development. If you need help in one of those areas, give me a call. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the Serial Wombat 18AB's internal temperature sensor. And this video will be broken up into three major parts. Uh, the first one is looking at how to get to the temperature sensor through the Wombat panel. The second one will be doing a series of calibrations to so that we can improve the accuracy of our temperature measurement. And the third part will be outputting directly from the serial Wombat temperature sensor to a hundred uh, mil microamp panel meter so that we can use it as a temperature indicator, as well as using the Serial Wombat 18AB's ability to store commands to be replayed at every reset to show how we can turn the Serial Wombat 18AB chip into a standalone uh, temperature to voltage converter. So let's take a look at that now. So let's go down deep for a minute and talk about how the temperature sensor inside the microcontroller works. You can skip this part if you're not interested. The Serial Wombat 18AB chip is a PIC uh, 24FJ256GA702 microcontroller. And within that, there is an analog to digital converter and also a unit called the charge time measurement unit, which is basically a unit that's capable of generating a fairly precise internal current source. That internal current source can be fed into a diode that is in the die that's designed to generate a voltage that's proportional to temperature when a current is passed through it. So you can see a page from the uh, PIC data sheet here, and we've got this curve. If we feed 55 microamps from the CTMU through this temperature diode, it outputs a voltage that varies uh, across temperature. Now, if you take a close look at this, what you find out is that the area where we're going to be operating, which is, you know, probably from 10 degrees through uh, about 40 for a, uh, you know, for a typical indoor environment, the entire range that that changes is only about 50 microvolts. Uh, I'm sorry, 50 millivolts. And so, in order to get that measurement, we actually have to do two conversions. First, we convert uh, an internal band gap reference voltage, which is nominal 1.2 or 1.25 volts, against to get our source voltage. Then we use the source voltage to measure uh, in absolute millivolts the input uh, that we're getting from this diode. So, and you can see here, it says typical. So essentially everything in this system, there's quite a bit of variance. And so you're gonna see that our initial uncalibrated results are somewhat inaccurate. Uh, and in this case, we are talking about a Serial Wombat 18AB black label edition. Uh, if you get a red label edition, I actually run it through some additional steps after programming that try to calibrate some of these things out that trim the uh, the current source. So it's exactly 55 microamps that measure V band gap against a uh, specific uh, high resolution voltage reference so that that's accurate. And then with the temperature sensor, we actually do a one point calibration that moves this curve up and down. So the Serial Wombat 18AB red label edition is pretty accurate across room temperatures. It gets a little worse as you get to outside of that range. The Serial Wombat 18AB black label, uh, you're going to want to either do a temperature calibration on it or just take it for what it is, which is really a low resolution, uh, low accuracy temperature sensor. This is not a substitution for a uh, external temperature specific uh, chip, an integrated circuit, either analog or I squared C based. Uh, that, but given that it comes free within the die, it's kind of a nice thing to have and to play with. So let's take a look and we're going to be using this device that you see here, which is an incubator I got off of Amazon. I drilled a hole in the front so I could run wires through it. And so it gives me something that's a temperature chamber. And I've checked this against my Fluke and a couple of other uh, thermometers. And the 
controlled temperature actually is pretty good. I'd say plus or minus one degree C of what it indicates on the front panel. So let's throw our serial wombat chip in there and take a look. So I'm using a serial wombat 18AB chip that's connected up via UART to a PC through an adapter. And I'm going to say open serial. I'm on COM10. So I'll say OK, and you'll see it'll initialize the chip. And actually, as part of startup, it will read the temperature. Currently, the thing has been sitting in a uh, in the incubator at 35 degrees or 34 degrees C. And you can see it's reading out a temperature of 44.1. So it's off by almost 10 degrees. This is not a big surprise. So what can we do to improve that? First of all, let's take a look at how we can take a look at real time readings. We're going to go to monitor public data and the serial wombat chip provides a variety of interesting different data sources that you can read as 16 bit values. In this case, we're going to read our temperature and hit auto sample and we can see it's coming through. These are in hundredths of a degree C. And so we're getting a value of approximately 45 and a half right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the serial wombat chip in the uh, incubator and I'm going to take measurements at a variety of different temperatures about five degrees C apart. I'm going to uh, push this all together because typically it takes the incubator a few minutes to change temperatures. Then you should give it a few minutes after that to allow the serial wombat chip to adapt to its ambient temperature and everything gets stable. So let's walk through a few different points and we'll see what we get. Our first data point was taken at an actual value of 12 degrees C and the serial wombat chip indicated 20.75. Our second degree one was taken at 20 degrees C and the serial wombat chip indicated 28. The third one was taken at 24 degrees C and the serial wombat chip indicated 33. The fourth one was taken at 29 degrees and the serial wombat chip indicated 38. At 34, the serial wombat chip indicated 44 and a half. And at 39 degrees C, the serial wombat chip indicated 50.75. So if we if we draw a graph and have Excel plot those, then find a linear best fit line, uh, the actual value I'm sorry, the serial wombat indicated value is at the bottom. The actual value is at the on the right. So if we take the serial wombat value and pass it through this MX plus B line, uh, if we multiply it by 0.89 and then subtract 5.57, that will correct the indicated value to give an actual temperature. So we will take A2, which is the indicated, times 0.8905 and subtract 5.576 and we get something that's pretty close. So if we wanted to, once we had this calibration scheme, we could uh, use this on our Arduino or on our PC or whatever to compensate for the error in this particular uh, chip. As the data sheet says, the slope on this line may not be exactly what they say it is. The 55 microamps might actually be providing 53. The uh, reference voltage that we use to convert A to D counts to these absolute values may be off. There's a lot of different places where we could pick up some error. But by doing a calibration, we can get results that are really quite good within the range that we calibrated. And the tighter the, the range, you know, if you only need 30 degrees of output, only calibrate within that range. Because the more you move outside of that range, the more the line, the worse the line is going to fit your points and the less accurate it'll be in the range that you need it to be accurate. In a previous video we did, uh, we saw how we can use output scaling on a pulse width modulation. PWM is what we're going to use to drive that meter uh, that takes the input from a source pin or piece of public data runs it through a series of steps and then out to the PWM value. In our previous video, 
we used a PID algorithm over here. We're not going to do that. In this case, we're going to scale our inputs. And we know that uh, we want zero degrees C or zero, 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 zero after correction to correspond to no PWM so that the meter is all the way to the left. And we want 100 degrees to correspond to 3.0 volts, which would be 100% uh, on the meter through here. So we're going to use the input scaling to make that happen. It'll just pass through all the rest of these to the output. And if we do our math right, then we will have a meter that indicates the temperature that is coming off of the internal temperature correction. So for starters, we know that we want the output of the PWM to range from zero to three volts. Zero is easy. Three is what percentage of our nominal value? It's 90.09. .09. So we multiply that by 65,536 and we get 59,578. So we want the, the PWM output to be 0 to 59,578. This will cause the output to be 0 to 3 volts. And so then the other question is, what do we want full range for the input to be? Well, we want input full range to be 0 to 100 degrees C, because that's what we want to display on the meter. However, we know that the internal temperature uh, measurement is not accurate. So if we want the real temperature, if we look at this y is equal to 0.8905 uh, minus whatever, if we want the actual value to be zero, what input value does this have to be? Well, we do a little bit of math. We move the 5.7, 5.57 over on the other side, and we divide it. Five point five seven, five point five eight uh, divided by point eight nine oh five, and then we have we know that it comes in hundredths, so we have to kick this over. Uh, input low range will be six hundred and twenty six, and then we know on the high side we want y to equal. Uh, 100. So 100 plus 5.58 divided by 0 0.8905. And we get 118.56. 11.18.56. 11, So if we go over to the Serial Wombat panel again, we can open up the PWM that is attached there. And we will just set our duty cycle to, we'll say configure. If we set our duty cycle to halfway through, then we take a look and we say, oh yes. That value is a little bit above uh, half. So now we're going to put our input and output scaling in. So our input scaling, we said we want the low to be 626, the high to be 11,856, and say configure input scaling. Then we'll go to the output scaling. We want that to be 0 to 59,578. And then we go over here to the source pin. And we say we want the temperature pin to be the source. And we hit Enable. And what we see over here is that we have 34 degrees C 
if we look up close on the meter, uh, we see it's coming in at about 36 over here. So, you know, this meter's not super accurate. I got it for $2 on AliExpress, and they shipped it through the mail, and it got all beat up, and it wasn't really packaged well. I've got uh, resistors in the back that are 1% accuracy resistors. There's three of them, so they may be off a little bit. Uh, so the grand add-up of all of the various uh, things that could go wrong here uh, still has come out to be pretty accurate. So now at this point, let's go ahead and change our temperature. We'll give that a little bit of time to soak, and we'll see how our meter moves. Now, version 2.1 and later of the Serial Wombat 18AB firmware has the command capture capability. And this can be done through the Wombat panel application. It can be done through Arduino. Uh, it's part of the API. So what we're going to do now is instead of having to set up this PWM after the chip resets, we're going to capture these commands and tell the Serial Wombat chip that every time you start up from here on out, I want you to take pin 19, assign it as a PWM that reads the, the temperature according to the scaling values that we put in. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, you can see we're constantly reading values uh, from the temperature. We don't want to do that because it would capture all those read requests as well. So let's turn auto sample off. Okay, that looks good. Now we've got nothing interesting that's going on. We're going to go to command capture and say start. Every command that's issued to the Serial Wombat chip uh, going forward will be stored into flash when we say to commit them. So we're going to configure our PWM. We're going to set the input scaling values that we did before. We're going to set the output scaling and watch over here. You can see the commands come through so that that command got recorded. And now we're going to enable based on the temperature. So that's all of the commands that we need for that particular uh, process. We're going to go to command capture, stop and store. And at this point, the uh, PWM output that's tied to our temperature should be configured every single time we start up this Serial Wombat chip. Uh, if you ever wanted to get rid of it, you can come up here, say start, then immediately say stop and store, which would essentially create a new record of startup commands that have no, uh, no commands stored. Note that you can't append to the the to the, the set that's in there now. Every time you do a stop and store, it replaces any previous sets of stored commands. And there is a limit to how many you can do. There'll be a whole video in the future on command capture uh, that will talk about all those things. It's a little out of scope for this video. But uh, let's take a look and see that work. So we can see here that we are outputting the room temperature. It's a little over 21 degrees centigrade, which feels right. And we're connected on my USB cable up to the computer. We're gonna disable that. When we do that, you can see that the meter lost all of its power. Now, instead of connecting to a computer, which could tell the Serial Wombat chip what to do, we're just gonna hook it up to a battery. And when we do that, We see now the PWM re-enables, and once again, we're seeing an output of about 21 degrees. So what happened here is the Serial Wombat chip started up and replayed those stored commands, at which point then now we're reading off of the temperature reader again and outputting the appropriate value to drive this display. So that's a good example of one of the awesome new features of version 2.1 of the firmware, which is the ability to essentially turn the Serial Wombat chip into almost a standalone signal converter. It can't do really highly intelligent things, but it can do uh, very useful things without even having the help of a host at this point. So I hope you found this uh, video to be instructive and useful. I had a good time making it. If you like it, please hit like. 
uh, appreciate anybody who subscribes. Uh, that certainly is the best way to get new information about the Serial Wombat chip. Uh, if you're using the temperature controller for, or the temperature sensor for anything, uh, or if you have a question about it, please leave me a comment below, or better yet, send some pictures to help at SerialWombat.com that show your project and what you're up to. I'd love to feature uh, your project in a future video like this. So that's all I have for today. Everybody have fun and keep making stuff. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.